Hey, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I am so excited to be here with you today on the mic is John Cooney. How you doing? John Cooney is the Sherpa tracker, as he always is, but if it's your first time here, we have a bunch of cameras, and he follows my crazy action around just to make sure you see everything I'm talking about and can be really part of the action. For everyone who's here in the live audience, hi! <laughs> How are you guys? I'm so pumped to see everybody today, weirdly. Yeah? Yeah, why? I am. Why you, well, why I, I don't know. This is really fun. So we're starting to get into the arty art stuff. Like we're starting to get into the 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 jars of mystery at the art store. And I, I like demystifying those and just having them be just like some stuff you could get if you need it. Are you being, I'm being stunned hands. I, that's a, you know, that's an interesting experience I always have in the art store. I'll be in an art store to pick something up, right? And maybe I'm checking out a new product that's released or I'm just getting something that I've run out of. And there's always, and I mean always, some person in the aisle. If you come with me on the tours, you've seen this happen. This just, th I think this this happened uh, when Susan was in here. It's happened when Hijinx is here. Where people come up, you know, like be like, do you know what any of this stuff is? There's that sort <laughs> of, do you know what any of this stuff is <laughs> moment. I don't know if you've had that moment. What is this stuff? What do we do with all of these this things? stuff? Because I, I mean, it's like it's like three aisles at Texas Art Supply of different jars of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty exciting stuff too. It's good stuff. You actually do want some of this stuff. You might not want all the stuff, but some of the stuff you might want. And so today we're covering some of my favorite stuff, which are the things that make what is already pretty thick paint even thicker. Yes. Right, we're 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 putting some more body in our heavy body paints. You're like, why would I want more? Because of this thing that um, they call impasto. Whenever you hear somebody say something is an impasto painting, what they mean is it's really thick. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I'd like to say, and I'm not trying to start nothing with the oil artists, because you know I have nothing but mad love for oil artists. But the truth is, yeah, you shouldn't be doing impasto with oils. They crack. They're really not designed for it. They're designed for thin glazing. I'm actually in the middle of the artist handbook so I can review the book. And I had to tell you, I'm like 55 pages of why. <laughs> That's true. Really. Uh, so you kind of see how this review is going to go. But regardless, the information is very strong that way. But conversely, acrylics, which are, an, and I just learned this from Daniel, an oil byproduct. What? Yeah, this is a sideline of the oil industry, which really was a shocker to me. Huh. I didn't know that. I'm going to be learning things. I mean, I'm sure in some, I'm going to be more informed on it way. Yeah. It was just some crazy thing Daniel said to me at the art store. But <laughs> Daniel's crazy always has a point, so I'm kind of interested to find out what his point is about. Yeah. Um, of course, in the same thing, he was telling me how I could eat cadmium oil paint. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really. <laughs> don't eat paint. Don't, don't eat, eat paint. any paint. Don't eat paint. Um. Even if a mad genius tells you you can, don't eat, don't eat paint. But so this is this is some of my favorite stuff, and these are the things that add bodies. These are generally in pretty big tubs. In the description below, links. If mm. you see a product that you like, or you're planning on doing a project that uses these, links in the description below to those products and more information. As always, oops, I bumped my mic. How am I doing? You're fine. Okay, so hopefully we're excited. We'll come down to the table, if we may. All right, so we see this gorgeous, really textural painting. We've got this coming up Saturday. Yeah. And the way that these paintings are done, and I can even make them more textural than this. Really? I just thought this was a good intro texture. <laughs> wow. This was the intro to this. So we're going to be doing this Saturday, and this really is a very beginner painting. This uh -huh. is, even though these are techniques that are not used by beginners, the skills required here are not all that complicated. They're not all that specific. You know, so I'm kind of excited about that. I've got some tools here I'm sharing with you. There are different types of palette knives that you can use to apply these. All this stuff can be applied with brushes <laughs> or palette knives or um, I've got different types of palette knives. I've got plastic ones. I've got metal ones. Whenever you see a knife like this, I had another one somewhere and I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is. This is what I like to call the Bob Ross. This little shape here, yeah, right? This is sort of what you see a lot in his things. The rubber spatulas are really new, and I love these. They're going to be coming in our upper up lessons when we start really getting thick. Yeah. And then these plastic things, you know what? They're fine. They're all fine. It's all fine. They're just, they're just another kind of brush. It's yeah. like when you decided, you know what I don't want on my brush? Yeah. Bristles. <laughs> I think I'll paint with a stick now. That's really what happened here. Some artist was like, I think I'm going to paint with a stick. Right now, stick. 
<laughs> That'll be fun. Because we artists, we like to do things that are fun. And so I have here on this chart, I have put out some different things. I've got gloss gel right here. And I put that out last night. You're going to notice this milking yeah. right here. That's just because it's not dry. This stuff takes a while to dry and is at the heart of why there's a debate on how long you have to wait before you varnish. Yeah. This is where the debate actually comes from. So that's why there's no gospel in art. There's no hard and fast rule. Like some people say, you have to wait two weeks. Well, that's not entirely informed. It depends on what you painted. Mm -hmm. But if you're painting with thick practices, yeah, you got to wait a minute. Check uh, the Golden website if you want exact specifications for how long to wait on certain products. Right. Because they'll have tested it in space and in subterranean caverns <laughs> and in a, in a submarine. You think I'm joking, but then you'll read something. You'll be like, what do they do? <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> texture paste. This is texture paste by Golden. Okay. And what I just want to share to you is you can get these little guys free. If you go to any of their Just Paint workshops, <laughs> coarse modeling paste, coarse modeling paste, and then they're going to give you some fiber paste, and then you get some weird colors. That's I, so cool. I don't know why you get these weird colors. But you get well, to test little, your paste. To test your paste and your paint. So you got Indian yellow hue. you got some fluorescent pink. So you got some high flow, right? These are the liquids. These are the dyes that were like what we used on the owl. And um, this here, I think, is some open. Nope. No, it's not open. None of these are open. The, Fluid guess, and just regular golden, uh, heavy body. These are the colors that you get and these pace. That's awesome. Just, they give you samples if you go. Other thing, if you're ever lost in the art store, guess where I got the idea for this chart? Where? From Golden. Yeah. <laughs> because what they do is, and I think this is real smart, and sometimes the art stores will make their own and put them out. Uh -huh. But if you ever go to the golden display, if your store has a golden display, it's a quick cheat sheet. It's like a crib sheet. It's like a, like, what were those notes? Cliff notes. It's a cliff notes for art materials. Golden creates a cliff notes for art materials, which are these weird little blocks that have demos of the product colored and uncolored. See, they need to make some of those giant inflatables like Liquitex makes. Yeah, I want all the inflatables. All the, infl all the you know, you see those the giant. If your paint company, just send me your inflatable. <laughs> Stick it in my studio. <laughs> so you don't even have to. Just send me your inflatable. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I will put your inflatable in my studio. <laughs> but that's the point. Like, if you're ever stuck, if you're ever lost, if you can't remember what we talked about in our big quest, uh -huh. go check out the cheat sheet over at Golden. Somewhere there's a bunch of little blocks. And they do that. I really like that. Sometimes Liquitex has those going out. Look for the cheat blocks. If they don't happen to have it, get your phone out and then pull this up. <laughs> then it will help you. All right, so we have the glass gel. The thing I want you to notice, I painted on the top of it here. That's uh -huh. the first application of, of, of how you could do this. So you can paint. You can either mix in, like what you see here, uh -huh. paint into the gloss gel, and you put it out. Or you can put the gloss gel, allow it to dry, and paint on top. See the difference between these two effects? Oh, yeah. There's just, there's not a right or wrong. There's just a difference. If I continued and continued to add gloss gel and less pigment, I would just have a very see through y, slightly tinted gloss gel. Gotcha. That would dry like this. It wouldn't underbind. It wouldn't be bad. And again, is it a desirable effect? In the middle here, I have three kinds of heavy bodied paint. I have two kinds of student grade paints and then I have a pro paint here and what happened was so I built these up as high you know really high uh -huh. these two leveled a bit as you observed last night yeah we're gonna actually probably make a time lapse of this but if you want to see time lapse paint leveling you can go by Golden's um, YouTube channel <laughs> and watch some paint dry <laughs> because they do that they give you time lapses which we didn't do so if you want to see how much it levels or watch those things in real time and get like math percentages or very specific information, um, all of the pro companies, as I have recommended in the past, generally have YouTube channels and have resources. So if something piques your interest, don't let this be the last step on this mini quest for you. Yes, jump over there and watch paint dry. Yes, please. It's actually really good. Well, you know, <laughs> informative. And, and, you know, go buy your favorite companies. They have, you know, uh, Jerry's Artorama has a website. Uh, Liquitex has a website. Gold has a website. Um, I think Dollar Rally. Everybody has a website. Go buy and check them out um, and see what they have to say. If something ever piques your interest in a quest, don't let us be the last and only place you visit. Get more information. And so there's the heavy body. See, it didn't, it didn't really shrink down at all. Oh, yeah. And uh, the, 
uh, just paint. Just well, paint. Just paint dot org. Yeah. That's the the one that where you can where they have all those white papers on, yeah. like. Yeah. usage and gels and crazy stuff like all that. the information you can need it doesn't matter if you don't have a fine art education i cannot stress this enough you do not have to go to art school anymore to get this information it is no longer required it is no longer a select cadre of people who share an information set with another select cadre of people nope probably using that word wrong <laughs> but <laughs> but it, 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 it's no longer that type of system where yeah. you're juried in and you're approved and you and it's just a small percentage. If you have it in your heart, you can take this as far as you want to take it, and nobody has the right to tell you no. Mm -hmm. Next product was the Golden um, Course Modeling Paste. Okay. Right? Yeah. And you can see this here. And what it is, is it's very scratchy. Right, scratchy, scratchy, and yeah. I painted on the top of it here. This is what it looks like, white and dry. Here it is with the paint mixed in. Interesting. You can see the difference, and there's like there's a tooth to it, is what there is. There's a bit of sand. This reminds me a little bit of Liquitex sand medium. Hmm. A bunch of people have coarse modeling paste, but whenever you see modeling paste, what they're saying to you is you and your knife can build this up into high, weird little peaks if you feel like it. And we're going to demo that in a second. Oh, yeah. And the last is modeling paste, just straight modeling paste. This modeling paste come in two things. They come in rigid and flexible. All you need to know is if you're painting on something like a smooth surface, uh -huh. right? Like a board or glass or something that's not going to bend or flex or warp. Like wood, believe it or not, is not necessarily always rigid because it can be affected by moisture. That's Things true. artists don't sometimes don't think of because they'll be like, well, it was sold to me by the art store and it should be, you know what I mean? But it, if you're in a place that has a lot of humidity, that can impact your painting over a long period of time. Yeah. So you just got to think about those things a little bit. If you think there's going to be any flexing, any any warping, go with flexible paste. I go with flexible paste. Some people really live and die by rigid. Hmm. And that is just a preference thing. You're going to hear heated debates, as you will in all things art about the validity of something <laughs> but the final actual truth is just is just the preference thing so if you're gonna if you're gonna have be on a canvas you need the flexible yep if you're gonna be on rigid you're gonna you, you, you can use the rigid if you're on a smooth surface you must abrade it what does that mean it means you have to sand it scratch oh. it up scratch it up oh get your steel wool out get something any time that you're painting on a surface that you're not sure your ground is going to stick to, that you're not sure that what you're going to be painting on top is going to stick to, just take the step of abrading. Okay. In some way. Just scruff it up. Gotcha. I mean, you could sit there and put your little hands down in the sand and run it up and down the beach. This also <laughs> works. Just, you know, Might and call dirty. that part of your performance. <laughs> I don't know. But you can see it's mixed in over here. I mix the pigment over here uh -huh. into it. It's still drying. This is going to take forever to dry dry. Yeah forever to dry dry and so now i'm back to the poppies the poppies were done with this oh this is just a, a primary red and these are cad red that's why there's a difference in color pigment but these and you can see how every little like i don't even know can you see how yeah, how fine these little peaks are there's some peaks on here that are so fine i don't know how to show it can you stunt hand it i don't know like can you do it these weird little peaks and then, like, if you can, to the side, yeah, it, there's, like, these f hair peaks. And that's what modeling paste does is give you these hair, like, whatever you carve into it, you have. I'm, I'm a little enthused today, aren't I? i got to calm down. Heart is relaxing. What am I doing? So we kind of have the gist of what I'm talking about. And then I just want to show you some stuff and then... As I'm showing you stuff, you guys can ask John some questions, and I will answer your questions, <laughs> and that'll be fun. Oh, everybody likes the poppies. Huh? Everybody's liking the poppies. Who doesn't like the poppies? We're doing the poppy Saturday. It'll be so fun. Yeah. Do the poppy Saturday. Stick around. Stick around. Don't even leave oh, this room oh, you should until like, Saturday. You should hit that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Hit the subscribe button. If you like art questing instead of art school, if you like questing instead of going to draw, draw boring school, Go ahead and hit the subscribe button because do this every week. Yes. I'm just going to tell you the stuff. Free here on YouTube. I'm going to get stuff Live. thrown at me by other artists whose like, whole business is modeling <laughs> paste. So here is a tub of some flexible modeling paste. Cool. And um, I really, on 
the heavy stuff, I, I think all the pro ba- brands are, they make some pretty good stuff. Yeah. You I buy just, this stuff by the bucket full. Yeah. My brand decision here was based on that was the biggest bucket. Look at how that scoops out. Yeah. See, I'm, see I just go Whoa. in here and then I scoop it off. Probably don't need that much. Right. See what I've got there? Woo-hoo. So much fun. What are you looking for there? Sherpa? I don't know. I'm just getting stuff. I'm goofing around. Okay. So, you know, this mixes right into your paint. You know, it's not a big deal. It's not. It's not, my friends. It's not a big deal. There's a lot of people asking about a palette knife tutorial. Yeah, we're going to need one. We're going to we're gonna cover the amount of palette knife instruction we need for Saturday. We have another little kind of introductory lesson after that, I think, for uh, Love Summer Art, which is coming up. Yeah. Love Summer Art is back. It's back, baby. Hashtag Love Summer Art. <laughs> Biggest art festival online in the world. Coming back. Um, and I'm going to see. I'm going to just pull out a little bit of this blue, and I'm going to work it into my white. And then I got my little modeling paste here. And that's the flexible modeling paste. This is the flexible. Even though I, Now, I could do the rigid, right? Yeah. Here, if I felt like it. I could do rigid modeling paste if I felt like it. Don't need to. So Shanaz was wondering if using just mixing it in here. If using structure paste or modeling yeah. paste, does she need to gesso first, or can she go straight onto canvas? Um, you know, if you've got a pre-prime canvas, don't worry about it. Um, scrub it up. If you don't have a pre-prime canvas, go ahead and hit it with some gesso. Because nowadays. You just have no idea. These companies are trying to meet the demands, these new demands on canvas sales. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what they're coded, quoting sometimes with. Yeah. Right? See how this is just real easy? I'm just, it's like frosting a cake. It really, you know, I try to scrape with the loads. You can kind of see how it loads here. It's like when I'm loading it, I, I'll pull a little out like that. I got a little bead. If you guys remember Bob Ross, you remember the bead. And then maybe I'll pull a little white into it. Here's my new bead. And then I can pull some modeling paste into it. It uses up a lot of palette paper. This is where I'll say it's kind of intensely wasteful. Okay. Yeah, you can move me anywhere. Of course, not like in my comfort zone of painting. <laughs> not that. Don't. Yeah, it'll be fine. And you're just kind of, look, if you're a very neat, tidy person, knives are going to make you mental. <laughs> And maybe that's good for you, right? Maybe you need to be mental, right? Maybe you need to feel like, you see, I'm going to scrape it off on the canvas because I don't really care. Um, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> just like, this down. doesn't matter. It's all good. Where are you going? I'm just getting, I'm just coming over here and getting some color. Okay. I'm just, you know, kind of, I'm not really painting here. Don't hold me to this. I'm not actually painting. This thing where you think I'm painting, that's not actually happening. You think I'm painting, but I'm not actually painting. <laughs> You're like, so but it looks like there, painting. Sherpa? I'm just kind of giving you guys an idea of how, like, and look, this could not be a cheaper knife. <laughs> I have a good knife in the description that is one I actually use. But, I mean, this is not, uh, if you watch uh, any of the videos by Angela Anderson, uh-huh. she does these with credit cards. Oh, yeah. Right? So, don't take it too serious. Now, I can do this technique without my texture paste. If I felt like it. Right? Now, this does extend my paint. And it it does, like, help it go further. But I could sit there and just put the paint out like that. See? Now, does it affect drying time? Yes. Slows it down a little bit. Huh. But uh, honestly, palette knives, you guys watched any Aphromov, um, anything? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, I, I, Debbie has an interesting question. I have an interesting answer for Debbie, I hope. Can you use joint compound or spackling paste? Um, wow, that's definitely one to research YouTube on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say definitely research the YouTube to get a sense of that because I could not tell you that, Debbie. <laughs> I have never used joint compound in my painting, but I promise you some artist has tried it, and then some other artist has shared the experience. Now, I know that they use it a lot when they're doing, you know, like, 
interior decoration work. But. I have seen people use the um, wall mud to carve um, sculptures out on walls. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We met a guy who did that. Yeah. So I know that's doable. But I don't know about on canvas. I have, ne you know what I mean? Uh, what I'll say is caulking is probably not archival. It probably has chemicals that leach and are a problem to the pigmentation of your paint or its longevity. I have to say, and I'm not trying to mess with gold and I really like them. They're going <laughs> to give me a nice tour. But if you ask them a question, and I don't care how crazy it is, they will literally find someone who knows the answer. I mean, don't take advantage of it. But if you're like, can I use caulking paste with your products? They're going to have a serious chemistry conversation about whether or not that's possible our own hijinks wrote them uh recently about putting leds into a painting and would that be safe <laughs> with their products and there were several conversations back and they forth were, where they really took it seriously and came back with we can't guarantee you won't burn to death <laughs> i don't think they said that they said they can't guarantee your safety but go ahead and try it i think <laughs> well they didn't say go ahead and try this we can't guarantee your safety <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> we don't test for electronics and paint. It's but not they our thought gig. about it. <laughs> yeah. What I'll say is, I mean, what was really lovely about them, and I'm just going to pull this out here, and I can pull some modeling paint. It got some green in it, but I don't care because this is a palette eye painting, and I don't care. Look at this. So I'm just going over the top. All right. So no, it's not dry. I don't care. Wow, painting. that's really cool. Wipe it off. So, you know, it just couldn't be easier as a product. Do I have any red? Uh, how red? I'm not as fond of the cad red, but I'll use it. The cad red is my favorite. I, if you guys are wondering if the red is worth it, my mom just, she does these like paint to paint color tests yeah. where she gets all of the blue. Now, and she's like, is it any good? And then maybe it's not, so it's hard to say. Now, I know a lot of people were uh, are, are concerned about the cost effectiveness of some of these things. When, yes. When compared to, like, say, caulk or or, or, or joint compound or something. Um, but, well, the, I, I, I noticed they're commenting on it in there, but I think that the difference in the materials is significant. Yeah, the difference in the materials would be significant. It may not be significant in your media experience with it, but it would be significantly different over time. Well, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, right? Know. Like, I could probably whip together some, like, flour and water and get some effect on my canvas that immediately would give me a result, immediately would give me some texture, but then, like, within a week, not be a good result. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. I never want to not encourage you to experiment or look for these sort of out of the box solutions because you never know. But because you never know, all your paint might fall off your canvas. And you've just got to be in a place where you're like, eh, if it all falls off, that's good. Don't sell that painting. <laughs> Here, Here's my thing. As you're experimenting just from one professional artist to hopefully some future professional artist, don't sell artwork you don't know will last. Oh, yeah. Do anything you want in your own studio that doesn't kill you or hurt you. <laughs> right. Have a blast. But don't put artwork out there into the collecting public that does not last. Yeah. That is the most upsetting thing. Jaclays that peel off the canvas, that's not cool. Yeah. You know. Right? There, and, 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 and resin paintings that are going to crack and yellow, that's not cool. Because a collector, that's a sacred trust between you and somebody buying your art. And you have to guarantee them some type of longevity. In your own studio, have a blast. Right. Yeah, that's what, stu that's what student study paints are for. That's exactly <laughs> what they're for. I'm mixing just, it's not really important what I'm doing here, but I'm just like... So, now the technique you're some. doing, can you you could do this on a canvas instead of a canvas board? Yeah, actually, some artists prefer it on a canvas because of the spring. Ah, right. Some artists prefer that because of the spring. Right. I'm gonna kind of mix this up, and now I'm gonna see how I'm lifting it up, and it's making these weird peaks. I've got the body paste here. Can can they see that there? Yeah, I think so. We'll pick it up here in just a second. Just making a hot mess here. It's fun for me. So this is what a five-minute poppy painting. <laughs> Welcome, five-minute poppy painting. There you go. <laughs> Just yeah, and but there's these peaks, and then when this dries, if you were like to say have that somewhere, the joy of this—it's the peaks down here that are the big deal—is um, the texture will hold. 
as the paint dries, it will not level. So now you've told a little five minute um, story of flowers in a field that was fun. Who doesn't like a little story of flowers in a field? Everybody likes a little story of flowers in a field. Who doesn't? I like them. You like them. We all like them. Flowers in a field. That's all this is about. That's all. This is just the basis. Hopefully you guys like this weird little poppy painting that I just made up in my head. <laughs> Just a bunch of techniques and oh, I can just now it's because it's bugging me. I'm gonna put some little white here. Okay. So yeah, just but this is the thing about palette knife painting. Oh, and here's the other thing with palette knife painting: you can scrape. Just show you guys that. Oh, wow. You just yeah, you can scrape. So there's just it's playful. That's what I'll say. Its benefit is it's playful, and it requires of you to release some rigidity in yourself. Spiritually, this is what palette knife painting gives you. It requires of you that you release some rigidity and you release some perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Not that that's necessary because perfectionism has a value. right? You don't get the Parthenon unless some perfectionist was in charge of that project. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, Somebody with real attention to detail. <laughs> needs to be around. We definitely want that in our lives. But sometimes it's also important to put that down and to release that and to know things are okay when they're messy and things are okay when they're loose and expressive and opened up and that you're opened up internally. I think you're kind of cluing in now that besides learning some art skills, there's some soul skills that we're working on. Like as you paint, yeah. as you learn these skills, it, it goes deep in you. And Nicole says that she's brave enough to pull out her, her scary palette knives, so she's ready to give it, a, give it a whirl. I'm stoked. Be sure you have a sandwich baggie for Saturday. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm Oh, that's right. You will need it. For yeah, it's in the description, but just be sure you have a small sandwich baggie and a pair of scissors. Mm hmm Those of you that frost cakes are like, oh. So I want to, I just want to give a big <laughs> hug We've, to all our moderators who are out here yeah. helping us today. We've had about 150 people out here hanging out with us. I love it's it. It's just I love having all you guys here with us today. It's been really amazing. I so, love that you guys take the quest so seriously. Yeah. And I love seeing you guys do that. I, the artsherpa.com. If you go there, there's a group that's pairs. You can come be some pairs with us. Um, talk to other people who are on this journey with you. Um, I'm starting to put some stuff in the group. The mm -hmm. group, I'm starting to like look into that group. I have not been able to update the center module because mostly I don't have Marisha's uh, signing code. We're working on it. <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> but we're going to actually start dropping in the next two or three months some mini quests in there, some supplemental stuff that you guys will see first. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you guys will see some stuff first in the art quest. Yeah. But listen, if you're not in the art quest... Um, on the website, uh, you're not going to miss anything out. It's all going to end up on the YouTube channel. This is just about you guys getting to know each other, being mm -hmm. able to make friendships there, being able to talk about your journeys with each other and support each other um, because you guys will always be the first art quest coming through. You'll be the first pairs. Mm -hmm. This is because every lesson you guys are the first to get to it. So whatever goes forward, you know, however long we leave this up on YouTube, five years from now, and who knows how many views these things have or how many people will be pairs or how much Paint My Photo will be sorry they I use their pairs. <laughs> it's okay, I got a copy of that picture. <laughs> um, no matter how that moves forward, you guys will always be the first. So go in there, get to know each other, talk to each other. It's uh, www.theirsherpa.com. And, um, you know, there's stuff and there's groups, there's things in there and we go in there and we're reading your stuff and seeing your posts. And also it's a great place. Like, I love it when you guys post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I love it when you're in the Facebook group. I love it when you guys come by Angeluni and say hi. I love it when you go by my page and say hi. But sometimes you guys are working on stuff you really don't, you know, that maybe it's private to you. Yeah. Now, and you just don't need every relative you ever had weighing in on. My relatives don't even see my posts anymore. Y'all have, have made it where <laughs> I don't pull up in their feed. <laughs> so I'm pretty safe. But, you know, maybe we have an uncle. We don't want to have weigh in on our artwork. Now, Imp was asking if it's okay if she if she posts her pictures up on, on the artsherpa.com. Yeah, please. Absolutely. Yeah, just if it's art related. I mean, don't sell sunglasses on the artsherpa.com. <laughs> um, <laughs> but please post up your paintings. You know, don't, like, have a mascara party. That's one of the ones. I have a mascara party. I want you to have mascara. Not here. <laughs> no. 
Um, if it's art related, anything art related, if you painted a rock in your garden, post it up, share it with your friends. We want to see it. If you have a question, or if you want to start a thread or a forum, if you just anything art related, it's um, a, it's a free space. It's a no judgy space. No judgy. No. No judgy. The arty. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge it. So you know, it's just a safe space, and you just go there, and we'll keep questing there. I I first was like, are we going to have fifty two weeks? And I realized we probably have a hundred and fifty two weeks <laughs> yeah. of stuff to do, of just talking about art. But you can see we're getting into the fun stuff, right? Yeah. There's just some gloss gel so you can, can see that there, you know, what that looks like. And it just doesn't do the peaks. It, it levels a little bit. Yeah. And you can see, like, you know, you just mix paint into it, and there you go. Just mix in some paint. Gel it. And this would be slightly translucent. There's a cool thing where we make these things called jellies, where we use plexiglass and glass, and we can make shapes and then move it to um, everything. So... Okay, fun stuff. I'm sorry, I go all day. <laughs> yeah. I go all day. It's been so good seeing you guys. I'm going to see you Saturday. Yep. We are working like crazy here on some projects, but I'm going to see you Saturday, and we're going to paint these poppies. It's going to be amazing. Keep questing, and your mini quest is to just get a credit card out, get a loyalty card out, get a palette knife out, and take what you have at home. Don't go buy new stuff yet. Just take what you have at home in the test canvas and see how tall... I gotta write this in the description for you. <laughs> see how tall of a peak you can make. Cool. And if it will hold it. Just see, like, you know, like like with whipped cream or you know how that goes the whipped cream, we whip the cream yeah, and try yeah, to make a peak. Yeah, totally know. Just see what kind of little peaks you can make and how well it holds and how long it dries and just get familiar with that idea. And and just play with the materials you currently have at home. And if you're getting not really getting the result you want, definitely go get more, you know, product yeah. as you need it. Absolutely. And let me know how the caulking works. <laughs> All right. I'm going to see you guys at the easel really Love soon. Love you guys.